Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I want to show you how easy it could be to start taking basic product shots. Now, these photos are not fancy stuff that you'd put, put on a bulletin board or anything. This is just normal basic product shots that like you would put, see on Amazon, you know, stuff with a white background, just to be able to see, you know, what something is when you chew on through your cart, so search for products, you know, the basic white background ones. So anyway, I, th I thought I'd show you how I take product shots and stuff, and maybe it might help you, uh, you know, develop your own uh, photography skills and taking products and stuff. So anyway, let's first go over here and start looking at our lighting setup. Okay, well, here we go. Here is my lighting setup, at least for the start of it. As you can see, I'm using two Octagon softboxes on each side. You know, I'm powered by my uh, DGB strobes and everything. However, I'm not actually using the strobes that whatsoever on this. This is simply just uh, using the modern lamps, which works fine for product photos because your camera's not going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be sitting on a tripod anyway. So it much works out for the best part. Now, as you can see here on the top, I actually have a reflector just kind of sitting on the back, kind of just pointed down. Now, I have the reflector side, uh, the silver side used here because it needs to bounce more light back onto what I'm actually trying to take a photo of. And this really does help quite a bit, you know, trying to box in that light to get even illumination. Now we can see here how I got the post, uh, poster board actually laid out. Now, this is just simple white paper poster board. You know, much like you'd find like at Walmart or any other department store, you know, for arts and crafts and stuff. Now, you'll notice I actually have it bent. And that's to actually create an infinite background. That way, when you actually see this here, that you actually never see it where it begins or ends. And this really helps give a lot more depth to the actual uh, photos and stuff. And plus, this cardboard is actually really cheap. So as soon as it gets dirty, you just throw it away with another. Another good thing about these backgrounds is a lot of times, uh, for example, like the one I have here is actually black on this side. And that way, if you want to use a black one, you can get it. But most of the ones like you normally get in like Walmart for like a school project stuff, normally white on both sides, which normally works out pretty good. Now, to hold this, I've simply just got a tripod, you know, regular tripod light stand. Not actually tripod, it depends on what you want to call it. It's got three legs, so it's tripod, okay? <laughs> and it just kind of held up there with some clamps on another little reflector bar. Now... If you really want to, you could suspend the top reflector some uh, on a stand or something other. But really, it, they're so light, most times they won't cause your soft boxes to sag any. So I just kind of threw them up there on top, and it works well enough. You know, I've got part of the weight's been held by the ref, uh, stand here, and the, so it's not heavy enough to really cause any issues with the soft boxes anyway. They're pretty light. Now, with the product actually in there, it's not in the center of the two boxes. I kind of keep it towards the back uh, three quarters or quarter to the back. You know, that way you get, when the light goes around, it tries to go from the corner here, the soft box to the other side, it takes longer to go, vice versa on both sides. And what happens with that is you actually get smoother uh, a light around it and less shadows, kind of, kind of softer light. Now, it's good to get good flat lighting on these. Because if you want to add any more contrast to anything, you can always do that in post. However, if you don't have even illumination, you can't pull back shadows what causes noise and stuff. So it's always good to have good even illumination. And plus, this also really helps when you try to go into Photoshop or any other uh, photo editing application and actual cut out the uh, thing. Let's say if you want to post it into another background, that way it's easy to actually, uh, you know, you know, select it and stuff and delete the background or mask out the background, depending on how, whatever you're doing. Here's another shot of the back here I wanted to show everybody. You can kind of get a better idea of where the actual, you know, the lens that I got here said I'm actually taking photos of. And you can see it's right before the bend starts in the paper. So you want to push it back you know, almost to the bend. That way, when you actually see it, you never see this bend. It just looks like an infinite background, which works quite well. Now, another thing you'll probably notice here is my actual camera and the lens I'm using on it. Yes, when I actually take product photos and stuff, I use anywhere between 125, uh, not 125, but well, yeah, I guess around that, around 135 millimeter up to around 200. Really depends. The, the reason is because I want to isolate out anything else and get close to the product as much as possible. 
And this way, you actually get a more narrow look at everything. That also helps getting the product in the shot without any of the background equipment and stuff, like your uh, soft boxes and everything. Now, another thing about the camera here is the actual settings I'm using. Uh, me, I am using F8 with this, and I kind of adjust, you know, the exposure to whatever looks good, depending on your, uh, your light power and everything, or the actual, uh, the product you're taking a photo of. So, you know, brighter things take less li uh, light. So there's no really set exposure you can just use for anything. But I like I said, I like to shoot at F8 and ISO 100. And it doesn't matter how long it takes because, you know, you want a really good, strong, sturdy tripod like I got here, this Benro, which is a video tripod. It's about as sturdy as you're going to possibly get. And it's about all you really do need for this. Now, the thing is about this also, uh, like I said, I'm shooting F8, but when you're taking product photos and everything, a lot of times you may want to consider uh, doing focus stacking. So if I'll take like a product photo of, say, at the front of it, then at the back of it. For example, our lens over here. Now our lens we got here, you can see I have it here in front, but you can probably see my fingers blurring out. <laughs> anyway, I'll first focus on where it says like Canon 35 millimeter here. Then I'll actually go to the back and actually focus in where it says like 67 millimeter at the top there. And now I may even actually uh, take another photo in between. Even though I'm shooting F8, this helps me uh, put those three uh, images together and create an image that doesn't have any blurs to it and everything's you know fully seen. And just, you know, that way everything's sharp and everything's in focus. And like I said, that infinite background helps with that too because there's no other things in there and just kind of zoom in and zoom out and, or focus in and focus out, depending on how you want to do it, and get a good even product shot across it. That way everything's sharp. Now, another thing about the little lighting setup like I have here, it, unlike a lot of those little specialized little boxes that you can buy, you know, from a, Amazon or whatever <laughs> you know to take product photos and stuff with is a lot of times you may need to actually move your light boxes and stuff and that's to get the best uh, your lighting across something reflective or to kind of accentuate the lighting better so this setup is actually better because I can actually pull these out move them around a little bit if I need to to kind of fill in some light on like you know it's easy to take a photo of this lens here <laughs> you know because it's round it's a cylinder shape but some things that are not you know, you may you know get this weird uh, gleam or shine on something you may not want. So this, you know, moving these boxes around helps a lot. And on top of it, if you really wanted to, that uh, soft box on top, you can actually put it on a light stand if you really want to, and pull it here in front if you want to, you know, change it. And of course, right now I have it on the uh, silver reflector, but you can use the white too if you want to. It depends on how much light you need to bounce, and how well you think it, uh, how you want the product to actually look when you actually take a photo of it. So yeah, that's my little you know, lighting set up for taking little basic product shots. And it's pretty easy, you know, there isn't much really to it. You just want to kind of fill in all around it, make sure you don't have any shadows. You know, a good thing is about me putting them out a little back further like I do, that really does help with the shadows. You know, if you put it up, you think you put it up uh, the center of the two boxes that you have less shadows, actually you end up some harder shadows sometimes. So pushing it further back, like I said, like here's the soft box, put it about right here. That seems to actually work the best for the most part a lot of times. Like I said, it has a lot to do with the way light travels. And, you know, so anyway, I thought I'd show everybody how to take a little basic, you know, product shots. These are really simple. It's really budget. Uh, like I said, you don't even need strobes. If you want to use this regular continuous light, even if it's just regular, you know, fluorescent, uh, fluorescent or LED bulbs like you picked up at the local hardware store, there ain't, you know, Really is no real uh, set requirement. It doesn't have to be very bright because you can put the camera and you know, take a photo and just let it go. Now, I do want to point out, when you do want to take a photo, you don't want to be want to be touching the camera or anything. Uh, I normally set mine like to a two second delay or I grab my remote, which happens to be on this tripod at the moment, and use it, one of the two. So it really doesn't matter, you know, uh, as long as the camera's not shaking any, which is what's really important. You know, the less shake you can uh, put in, the better. And of course, if you're using any kind of lens like this telephoto right here, or any kind of lens that's got image stabilization, turn it off when it's on the tripod. If not, that thing will be trying to move, and you'll be trying to center your uh, your product up, and you'll be wondering why it's be, it'll be doing this on the screen with you. So yeah, you want to turn that off.
And that really, I said, it also helps when it goes to stack the photos and stuff. That way it doesn't move a lot. There will be some focused breathing. There always is on pretty much any lens for the most part. But, you know, that way, you know, be zooming in and out. But when you carry it into, like, one of your photo editing apps, like I use Affinity Photo, but I've also used, like, a Photoshop before. Matter of fact, I did a tutorial on focus stacking. I'll link it in the cards, and you can check out. That way, if it's not moving a lot, it really does help, you know, with focus stacking and everything. If you like this video, then you may also like a shampoo Backup Pro. Backup Pro can back up and restore individual files or entire operating systems safely and securely. Backup support auto updates and can either be stored locally, on network drives, or in the cloud. Learn more by clicking the link in the description below. Okay everyone, I hope you liked this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you do. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, you know, please take time to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you. It lets you know when I release more videos. And also, uh, while you're at it, check out my Spreadshirt store. Links down in the description below. And also, if you're looking for some good deals and some uh, gear, uh, photo and video, audio equipment, and, you know, or even computer tech stuff, you know, relating to photography, you know, do check out my Amazon store. Link for it's down in the description below. I try to find the best deals I, uh, on Amazon and link them whenever I can. So, anyway, that's it for this video one. I'll see everybody in the next one.